Okay, so moving right along with our high poly stoplight prop, there are a few little simple shapes that I'd like to go ahead and tackle and knock those out really quick. And one of those shapes would be this very simple chamfer cylinder that I've created here. And if I go ahead and turn Isoline on, you'll, t you'll see what I'm talking about. This is another one of those really simple primitive shapes that simply by adjusting the radius parameter, the height, or even the fillet amount, I can go under the height segments and I can add a few extra numbers here or the fillet segments here or even the number of sides. And by simply going in and, and really cranking up this number um, under cap, I can add, you know, a few if I need to for that. And then under fillet segments, I'm going to go ahead and add about 30 for that. And that's going to give me a really, really nice rounded shape um, that I could use as my base for a high poly if I wanted to. Um, you know, play around with any of the radius parameters or the height parameters, I could do that as well without having to worry so much about um, utilizing edge control or, or anything. This would be a great shape to, to use as a base um, to achieve that sort of a look that I'm, I'm going for here. So if I move right along, right underneath of that shape that we have here, you'll notice that I also have this little cylinder that runs right underneath of it. Now I'm using the same cylindrical shape three times. I have one up here at the top, one here in the middle, and then one here at the bottom. And so also thinking about when using this in conjunction with games, if I had this cylinder run all the way through the center of this walk don't walk sign, I'd actually have a lot of wasted UV space and a lot of just blackness if I tried to bake out an ambient inclusion. And so what I'll do instead is I'll just make one little tiny nub uh, that's going to have a small amount of UV space, and I'll go ahead and instance it throughout all three of these pieces. And since it's an open face geometry, I don't have any uh, polygons on the top or the bottom, I can go ahead and just directly apply Turbo Smooth right there, give it a couple iterations, and set my ice line display, and then go ahead and zoom in on it a little bit just to kind of see how it's looking. And as long as it intersects with this top part, and if we look at the middle, and as long as we're not missing anything, uh, that should be fine to go ahead and just leave that as is. So if we go back up to the top of the light itself, um, let's go ahead and zoom out just a tiny bit. What I have is I have this really, really simple sort of a pole uh, that, that's basically going to work just like a regular cylinder. If we start from, you know, the left to the right, um, you know, you're probably going to want to go ahead and make sure that you don't have any polygons on the inside or the outside. I've gone ahead and deleted those out. And really all I did here was just grab a basic cylinder, uh, add a couple edges to extrude right along in this shape here, uh, as well as the connection piece that's going to run into the pole on the, the back end here. And so for adding edge control on a shape like this, it's going to work just like all of our other shapes in that all we need to do is we need to say, okay, I want to maintain, you know, this edge, this edge, and then these other edges that kind of pop up a little bit and give them two additional uh, edges outside of them uh, for our edge control. So I'm just going to go ahead and with wireframe, go ahead and select both of these and go ahead and loop that around, right click extrude and go ahead under width, go ahead and just give it a little bit of a width. And then the same thing for these two or these four edges here, go ahead and loop that, go ahead and give it an extrude as well. Now we're, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to bring the extrude down relatively low. If we go too high over, you'll notice that we start to get edges that kind of embed into each other and we want to try to avoid that. So we'll go ahead and set it to right about there where the two edges just about meet. And when we go into a, a solid view, we can go ahead and pan the camera back and then look at this with our turbo smooth and that should look good. Okay, so if I pull the camera back just a little, uh, this is a little bit more of a complex shape that we're gonna go ahead and tackle next. Now you'll notice that this sort of goes above and beyond a, a regular everyday sort of a box. We've got a little bit of a bevel that we have along the edge. We wanna maintain that silhouette. And we also have this sort of an awkward little nub shape that I've extruded and just kind of playing around with polygons and, and vertices. I've just sort of shaped that in uh, manually. And so one thing that you're going to want to uh, think about when you're blocking these sorts of shapes in is that if you can do your best to uh, maintain the edge control that's going to go left to right and, and straight up and down, that's going to make your ultimate high poly modeling uh, a whole lot easier. And so, for example, what I mean by that is if I went ahead and had this vertice that was connected all the way down to here and I really tried to shave off as many poly polygons or vertices as possible, while doing high poly modeling, it's going to be a lot harder to get really nice clean edge flow uh, while I'm in the modeling process. And so generally what I'll do is anytime I have sort of a 
a shape like this that's a little bit awkward and I, I've got extra details that I've you know beveled or extruded out is I want to make sure that my edge flow is going to be nice and clean and that's and, and what I mean by that is is thinking ahead in that you know if I want to go ahead and add extra edge control straight across this edge or straight up and down it's going to be a lot easier uh, as long as you you know keep that stuff in mind at the beginning even when you're blocking in your basic shapes and so to actually tackle this shape I'm going to take advantage of a couple other little tricks using the symmetry modifier as well as introducing another technique uh, when dealing with a, a sort of a rounded off surface like this so the first thing that I'm going to do is I want to go ahead and identify uh, my edge control that's going to go straight up and down uh, across this surface here and going to help me to maintain uh, this sort of uh, a shape that we have. So I'm going to go ahead and grab any one of these corner edges and just go ahead and ring select that. Use the connect tool. I want to go ahead and add two and then under pinch I'm just going to go ahead and give it a, a little bit of a pinch. And that's going to add my first little amount of edge control that I'm going to do to try to help maintain the, the surface and the silhouette of this edge along here. So maybe, maybe I'll go ahead and pinch that up just a little more. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the exact same thing along the front. If I go to a front view, I want to go ahead and grab all of these edges here. And what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to add a third edge of control uh, right along the sides here. Go ahead and hit connect on that. And go ahead and pinch that down just a, a bit as well. As well as another edge of control on this edge. So I'm going to go ahead and just drag select all of these edges here. Go ahead and right click connect and go ahead and pull that pinch up a tiny bit. Now what's happening here is I'm, I'm starting to kind of get the silhouette and the edge blocked in for, for this corner here. But right now along this specific corner I've only got two. I've got this original edge and then this secondary edge here. So for example if I go ahead and turn Turbo Smooth on and my ice line just to kind of get a look, quick look at what's happening is this isn't exactly smoothed out. And obviously we have a lot of other errors but we'll take care of those very soon. And so in order to kind of maintain this sort of a Christmas uh, for this particular polygon, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab that individual polygon. I'm going to go ahead and right click and inset. And I'm going to bring that third edge on the inside here. Go ahead and press OK. And then I'm going to go ahead and delete this extra polygon that we created here. And so now if I go ahead into... Uh, edge mode and go ahead and do a ring around all of the sides here that's going to run now while I'm doing this I'm not going to worry so much about this side because I'm going to go ahead and clean up this side here and then when I'm done we're going to go ahead and use the symmetry modifier so from here I can just go ahead and go to connect and I'm just going to kind of eyeball it I'm going to go ahead and use the pinch and I'm going to pinch this uh, this edge in just a little bit go ahead and right click and I'm going to go ahead and utilize target weld and that's going to go ahead and have a nice continuous edge that's going to create that third edge of control that we want uh, for this in interior sides right along inside there. So I'll do the exact same thing here at the bottom. Go ahead and target weld this down. And so now we've got a nice start for this corner, but we need to add the second and third corner that's going to go along this way up and down here so that this edge is maintained and this edge is maintained as well. And that's pretty easy to do because all we really need to do is go ahead and grab uh, these two side edges here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and start with the first one actually and go ahead and ring select that. Go to connect. I'm going to go ahead and pull the pinch in right about there and do the exact same thing on this side. Go ahead and add my connect. And that's going to create uh, this nice secondary one right around the outside of that corner. It's also going to go ahead and create our corner edge control that we'll ultimately be using for this front. Now we may go in and we may clean that up in just a second, but uh, for now that's going to go ahead and be fine to start with. And then for here, if I just go ahead and quickly use the ring tool to kind of ring around and grab all of these additional edges here, I can right click, connect, and just add one segment and go ahead and slide that segment all the way right up about just to the edge of the uh, the connection where that goes against that flat surface. So so now if I go ahead and put my turbo smooth on it, that should be uh, pretty accurate and pretty close to what we're what we're expecting uh, when we run that nice clean edge control. And so if I go ahead and pull this back, uh, what we're still having a little bit of an issue with is a couple things. First of all, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and fix this. 
uh, symmetrically so that we make sure that both the left and the right sides are cleaned up. And so the way that I'll do that is I'll go ahead and grab my object and then down here on the original editable poly modifier or rather underneath the turbo smooth modifier what I want to do is I want to go ahead and run my symmetry now uh, rather than on top of the turbo smooth because we want to go ahead and mirror across all of our edge control that we did uh, over on this side now one thing that you'll want to do beforehand is you'll always want to make sure that you've centered out your pivot point uh, to the object before you run the uh, uh, symmetry modifier just so that when you do run it it's going to go ahead and mirror it exactly down the middle and so for example all I'm going to do now is just go ahead and scroll down and find the symmetry modifier and by default you're going to have the show end result on so we're going to go ahead and turn that off uh, just because sometimes whenever I run this I never know whether the x-axis is you know on the right setting so I'll go ahead and have to look at it with the flip and if I'm clicking the flip on and off I can see oh, okay you know that's going ahead and that's that's adding the the correct side that we want whereas over here it's it's obviously incorrect so I'll go ahead and turn that on and now that's a perfectly symmetrical object where the edge control that we've already done is, is correct on both sides. I'll go ahead and right click on symmetry and go ahead and hit collapse two. And you may get an error message and that's fine to ignore. So we'll go ahead and say yes. Now down here at the base level, uh, obviously when we, when we put turbo smooth on, we still got some issues. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and go down to the base level and we'll address uh, just a couple really, really quick uh, fixes for getting this flat surface figured out. And so one more trick that I like to do sometimes when I'm working with a rounded off shape like this is uh, first of all I'm gonna go ahead and pull this uh, control edge here just a tiny amount here and then go up to the top and grab this control edge and bring it in just a small amount as well. And the reason for that is because in order to maintain this sort of a flat surface here I could go in and I could add a lot of extra cuts and up and down and try to kind of work with the uh, the edge control. But there's also another quick way that I can do that. If I go ahead and go into a front view I'm going to go ahead and turn my biangle selection on and just drag select any one of those polygons and as long as I'm within that 45 degree uh, angled selection I'm gonna go ahead and just select the inner polygons uh, for that flat surface and so what I'm gonna do here is if I go ahead and right click and go to inset I'm gonna go ahead and set my inset amount uh, to right around the same amount that I originally had for this uh, outer edge control and so by doing one inset that's already gonna go ahead and create the third edge of control that we want um, for that additional corner uh, that we had on the exterior. So if I go ahead and press OK and then go to Turbo Smooth and look at it, that's actually going to be really pretty close. Now in some cases, depending on the shape, if it's a little bit more of an organic shape, you may get a little bit of an issue uh, right around where the corners are and the pinching is. And so if that, if that happens to you, one thing that you can always do is you can always right click inset and add a third or even a fourth edge of control um, and, that, and the reason for that is because anytime you have a flat surface like this, adding additional edges is never going to alter the silhouette, but sometimes it can clean up any sort of a pinching uh, just by simply adding a couple extra control edges along that flat surface. So I'm going to go ahead and press OK and go ahead and hit the Turbo Smooth now. And now that's going to have, it's, it's going to have a really, really nice uh, a silhouette with a flat surface here that we're looking for. And so the only last little thing that we need to do is we need to figure out you know what we can do to kind of clean up uh, the the edges as far as looking at them from a front view now you'll notice that they they tend to kind of round off and kind of bow a little bit more than what we want and so what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go ahead and add um, a couple of the extra control edges similar to what I have here that are going straight up and down uh, on, on this this area right around in here I need to have something kinda like that that's gonna go right along inside of this area so this edge here isn't really doing a whole lot for me so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that one but I'm gonna go ahead and grab all of the ones that, looking at it from an orthographic view and I'm gonna go ahead and do a connect again only this time I'm gonna go ahead and add two and I'm gonna go ahead and pinch these out and all that's gonna do for me is that's gonna kinda tighten up that that curvature uh, a little bit nicer so that I don't get any sort of a weird bowing effect you know right around here inside of the middle so now going ahead and putting on the turbo smooth um, this is basically what I'm looking for here is a nice little small little bevel right here on the corner um, that kind of meets up with a flat surface and so if I undo that really quick you can kind of see what happened is it was kind of rounding that off and bowing that whereas if I go ahead and redo that I'll show you the final result and that's with a little bit nicer a little bit of a flat surface um, that kind of what I was what I was trying to work towards and so moving right along we've got a couple more pieces left for this walk 
don't walk sign. Uh, one of them is just this very simple plating that I have uh, here along this back. And if we use that inset trick that I showed you earlier, if we go ahead and just grab this interface, I can easily just go ahead and right click inset. And what I'm going to do is very, very sim similar. I'm just going to go ahead and add two edges of control uh, by simply insetting it twice. And then in order to maintain this sort of a curvature um, along these corners, what I'm going to do actually here is I'm going to go ahead and just grab any one of these edges. I'm going to go ahead and ring that around, and then I'm going to go ahead and loop it. And then using this edge selection, I'm going to go ahead and right-click Extrude. And so one of the advantages of doing this is that since I know that anything beyond this this particular control edge that's down inside uh, for this this third edge since this is along a flat surface all this sort of bunching up that's happening down here at this corner is ultimately not actually going to have any sort of an effect uh, on the actual uh, surface of the shape because it's not altering that silhouette and so the last thing that I need to do is just go ahead and ring select uh, the outer edge right click connect and on this case, I'm just going to go ahead and add one extra edge and go ahead and pull this in and go ahead and set that to OK. Now, I've gone ahead already and deleted out the back face. We're not going to see it for our final model. Uh, so just going ahead and applying that Turbo Smooth now, uh, this is going to work out. Now, you'll notice if I look at this in the high poly, it's going to look really messy and sloppy uh, right in here where all that edge control that we added. Uh, however, if I go ahead and remove the uh, wireframe, you can see that it's actually not doing anything to the surface of the uh, silhouette and so that's going to work out actually just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and exit isolation and I've already taken the liberty of utilizing the instancing of this little extra nub bolt and using the align tool. So the next step is going to be to go ahead and grab uh, this inner plate which which might ultimately be sort of where the light is when the uh, you know the lights blinking or something and it's saying you know go ahead and walk. This is going to work very easily uh, just like all of our other box shapes. I'm going to go ahead and ring select this and go ahead and connect. I'm going to add just one one segment inside here. I'm going to go ahead and ring select these and go ahead and connect and I'm going to add two for this and just pinch them slightly. And now there's going to be a little bit of a problem. If I grab this and I try to ring this, um, because these edges meet up at a ver vertex point like that and it's not like an open uh, open surface that I can easily work with. I'm going to have to go through individually uh, e on each of these polygons and go ahead and grab all of the uh, the edges that make them up. That'll happen sometimes when you have uh, two vertices that go to a single point. You're not going to be able to pull off a ring calculation or rather a ring operation. So now that I've gone ahead and manually selected them, I'm just going to go ahead and connect that and go ahead and pinch that in or out as needed. Go ahead and hit OK. And I'm going to go ahead and test this now and see how this is going to look with my Turbo Smooth. And obviously we're kind of having the same issues where, you know, stuff is sort of bowing out a little bit too much on the tops and the bottoms. And so all I need to do here is go down to the lowest level. I'm going to go ahead and select all of the edges from a front view. Go ahead and hit connect. I'm going to add two more, just like what we did earlier with that top plate. Go ahead and press OK here. Do the exact same thing for the top and bottom. And that should give us the shape that we need. All right, so next up, one of the last shapes that we have for this walk, don't walk shape is the sort of a rain guard, uh, you know, element protector cover that we have here. And if I go ahead and isolate selection on that, you'll notice that I've gone ahead, I, I went ahead and blocked this in and deleted out my, my back faces for it. And so to apply edge control to this, it's going to be very similar to... Um, you know, any sort of another flat surface that we have, you know, right along this corner, I'm going to start with that and I'm just going to go ahead and right click connect and I'm just going to add two very, very small uh, segments just to the insides of the shape uh, to get a nice little bit of an edge control on that corner to start with. And then I'm going to go ahead and switch to uh, grabbing any one of the inside or outside faces. If I switch to a left view, I could actually just go ahead and drag select. And what I'm wanting to do here is go ahead and with those edges selected right click connect and add just one segment and go ahead and slide this right along to the edges of the corner and go ahead and press OK and so I'm going to go into a side view and now I'm just going to kind of manually uh, grab these vertices here and pull them up just a sl slight bit I'm going to go ahead and pull this one down here and the reason for that is just so that I can kind of maintain this this edge control that's going to kind of follow the form of the uh, the corner here and so I may actually undo that 
I'm going to go ahead and pull these up and go ahead and pull this in just slightly. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm just cutting in an extra edge that, that's going to go all the way around the insides and the outsides. And so with this, I can go ahead and put that Turbo Smooth on, take a look at it, and see how that's going to look. And that's not looking too bad. Now, what I'm trying to keep in mind when I make this is I want this to be sort of a rounded off shape. And so knowing how the edge control takes place with, with something like just these two edges of control here, I know that that's going to be a considerably rounded shape, which is good, you know, if, if that's what your, what your kind of goal is for a surface like this. But there is just one little bit of detail that I like to add uh, to an, a surface like this. Now, if I go ahead and look at the object and I zoom out, you'll notice that that cover is, it's also bowing kind of in the middle, and I want to flatten that out just a, a slight a bit more here on the top. And I also kind of felt like that the thickness of it was a little bit weak. So a couple things I could do. One is I could just block it in and try to remodel it uh, to kind of give it a little bit more thickness. Um, or I can take advantage of another modifier, which I'll show you in just a second. Now, to fix this uh, sort of a bowing effect that's in the middle, really all we need to do here is, you know, just like all of our other uh, rounded areas like this, is if I just go ahead and throw in a couple extra edges of control, I'm going to go and set that to two and pinch these out a bit more. That's going to tighten that, that edging up and make that a bit of a flatter surface now it's, instead of it uh, rounding off right along the top. And if I really wanted to, I could also do it along the sides here. And so if I go into uh, any one of the orthographic or perspective views, I'm going to go ahead and grab all of the edges along the side and just go ahead and add an extra two more edges of control and just bring those up a little bit closer to that corner and go ahead and put my turbo smooth on now and that's gonna that's gonna flatten that out nice and neat now so that I still have a little bit of that rounded bevel on the edges but it's it's not gonna flare out quite as much here along the sides now as far as making this object a little bit thicker um, one thing that you can easily do is go ahead and take advantage of another modifier which is called push and so if I go ahead and scroll down to the push modifier what the push modifier is gonna allow me to do is it's basically going to do a calculation based on the normals of each of the polygons and so essentially you know the easiest way is just kind of show you what's happening if i go ahead and just use that modifier and just adjust these values over here on the push value that's actually going to thicken up the entire object as a whole uh, pretty much all the way around and so i could literally um, you know, just just get a really, really fat kind of beefy look to it if I wanted to. Or if I just wanted a, a slight, subtle, a uh, little bit more of a thicker object, that's easy to do as well. You can always just kind of play around with these push values. But that'll save you a lot of headaches if, if all you're really wanting to do is just kind of thicken it up without having to, you know, start over or, or go in and do a bunch of, uh, you know, modeling that could take you a little bit of time. Try taking advantage of that modifier. Now, moving up back towards the original light that we did in the last section, uh, we have this very simple little bit of a uh, uh, curved elbow jointed uh, pipe uh, that's sort of connected to the top parts of our uh, main light housing. Now, I've gone ahead also and, and cleaned out the insides and outside polygons for the tops and the bottoms of the connection just to make it a little bit easier for me. So if I go ahead and turbo smooth this now, just to kind of get a look at it, um, it's actually really pretty close. Now, there is a little bit of a problem if I look at it from a side view. What tends to happen uh, when, when working with cylinders like this is that without that edge control, is it's not really tightening up right here where this connection meets. It kind of tends to look like it's got a slight little bit of a curvature here. So what I'm going to do to kind of clean that up is all I need to do is go ahead and grab these edges here, right-click connect. I'm just going to go ahead and throw down one edge and then just manually kind of move it and, and bump it right around to the end there. And then do the exact same thing with the top. Just go ahead and grab one extra edge, kind of pull this in, and then go ahead and turbo smooth that. And so that should kind of flatten that surface out. This is very similar to the flat surfaces and things that we were working with earlier with some of our curved shapes. And so by just adding that little bit of extra control to a surface like that, um, that can go ahead and, and, and flatten out the silhouette and kind of help us maintain the shape that we want. So we can go ahead and exit isolation. And we're pretty much finished with all of the top parts. We have, you know, every all the pieces of the, the top light housing and the uh, the walk, don't walk section. You know, obviously the bottom of this is all just instances that I've gone ahead and lined up. And so now all we have left is we have these bottom uh, last couple little bit of shapes that we have. We've got a very simple bolt shape that I want to show you. And then this uh, little bit of a base. Now for this base part, 
Uh, this is going to work very similar to all of our other cylinders. We could just as easily grab that top polygon, switch to edge mode. I'm going to go ahead and, and, and do a loop selection for that those edges. Go ahead and right click extrude and find a nice uh, extrusion width and go ahead and turbo smooth it. And that's going to look good. And so now for the actual uh, little block base piece here, I'm going to go ahead and isolate selection on that. And all we need to do here is we could go ahead and switch to a top view. And I'm going to go ahead and grab all the edges along from left to right. And I'm going to do a connect. I'm going to go ahead and pinch this. Now one other quick trick is I can go ahead and hit apply. And what's going to happen is, is as soon as I hit apply, it's going to apply that original calculation. But then it's going to go ahead and try to attempt another calculation with those edges. And so all I would need to do now is don't click on anything else, but go ahead and drag select the next section um, of edges that I want to do do that operation to. And so if I go ahead and hit OK now, um, you can basically what that is, is it's using that same operation over and over again by clicking on the apply button uh, rather than hitting OK. So if I go ahead and ring select those, I can hit connect, go ahead and find a nice uh, pinch amount, go ahead and grab one inner edge and then one outer edge, ring select those, right click connect and we only need one if, if you've gone ahead and deleted out the bottoms of them we only need to worry about one edge here and we pinching isn't going to do anything when you only have one edge so all we need to do is go ahead and slide this up or down now if you get in a circumstance like this and this happens sometimes where um, you've got a couple different uh, operations happening at the same time if I try to slide this up you'll notice that the edges on the inside are moving down and the edges on the outside are moving up and that's just sort of a, one of the fun parts of, of doing this edge control. So one quick way to fix that is to go ahead and use two and then just do a pinch amount. And now that the actual distances between the two operations are going to be exactly the same. And so I'm going to go ahead and have two segments and then go ahead and press OK. And then all I need to do is go ahead and grab that inner and that outer one. And I can go ahead and just hit control backspace to remove those. And so now with our turbo smooth on, that's going to look exactly like what we're wanting. And so now with these actual bolt pieces, uh, we've got a couple real, real simple ones. You know, I've gone ahead, just like before, I went ahead and I, you know, used the align tool and mirror and everything for instances. So for the very, very bottom, like sort of this little washer that we have on this bolt, I'm just going to go ahead and grab that, go ahead and extrude it. Real, real small amount when you're working with a real tiny little bit like this. And go ahead and put Turbo Smooth on that and go ahead and exit isolation. And so now what I also have here is this very simple sort of a washer nut looking uh, shape that we have. And so if I want to maintain this nice corners that I have here along the outside, how I've got about six sides. And if I want to maintain that shape so that those are nice and sharp, but I want to get a nice circular pattern uh, here on the inside, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go ahead and grab all of our exterior edges along the top. I'm going to go ahead and right click connect and I'm going to add three segments that go right around along the insides of it. Just kind of pull them out to about right there. And then from here, I'm going to go ahead and grab each of these three, uh, or rather each of these six outside edges. Go ahead and right click extrude. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this in. Now you'll notice that we've got sort of a little bit of a pinching that's happening here. But if I go ahead and put my turbo smooth on now, um, after adding this additional control edge for that top surface, we're going to go ahead and just add one edge and kind of pull this up. What these extra edges are doing is they're going to go ahead and allow me to kind of connect um, right around the corners here so that this actual central edge is maintained. And so by putting Turbo Smooth on it, you'll see what I'm talking about. And so we'll have this nice little corner here uh, where, where we want the ends of that, uh, you know, the, that shape to kind of maintain. Whereas here in the center, this is going to give us that nice circular pattern uh, that we want since we don't have these additional edge of control. So I'm going to go ahead and put one more edge piece of edge control here on the insides and go ahead and show you that. Now again, it may look a little bit awkward, but since we have a couple extra support edges um, on the uh, at the lower level, right along the insides here, that's going to help us kind of uh, maintain it without messing up the silhouette overall. But it's going to give us those nice chamfered corners that we're expecting and maintaining that nice circle shape on the inside. So I'm going to go ahead and exit isolation mode and I'm going to look at these two little bolts that I've got created here and I'm going to go ahead and isolate them. And now what I want to do is I want to get sort of this uh, nice high poly sort of a rivet uh, looking bolt piece uh, here and I'll show you exactly how I created this base part. 
and by applying turbo smooth on this you'll kind of see what my my end goal is is it's just sort of a nice uh you know high poly uh bolt piece that could bake out a nice normal map or even you know kind of looking at it from far away it's got sort of that nice uh you know lots of nice grooves cut into it and it's very very simple if i go ahead and look at this from a front view all i need to do is i'm going to go ahead and start over here by by grabbing the shape and i'm going to switch to edge mode now what i want to do first is i want to go ahead and make all the cuts um, that are going to ultimately kind of represent each of these little grooves and all that requires is simply going into connect i'm going to crank this up to you know about 12 or so and go ahead and hit ok and so now from here i'm going to go ahead and right click chamfer with with each of those uh, you know individual edges selected and I'm just going to kind of find a nice chamfer amount and that's basically going to split all of those edges into two and so go ahead and hit OK on that and now I'm just going to go through and, and, and just manually grab each of those polygons uh, that were created by using that chamfer op operation uh, with those edges just select all of these polygons one by one and with them selected I'm going to go ahead and use the bevel tool I'm going to go ahead and right click bevel and I want to bevel them inward uh, just a small amount. So I'll, I'll start by looking at it from kind of a front view and then under height, just kind of pull them in a little bit there. And then under outline amount, I'll kind of sync that in just a bit as well. And so go ahead and hit OK on that. And so that's a good start. But the next thing we also need to do is to kind of sharpen them up. We want to go ahead and make sure that we add our edge control. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to edge mode and go to wireframe. And I'm just going to drag select all of the edges and then go ahead and loop that around. And so if you zoom in, if I zoom in really close, you'll see what I'm trying to do here. And so from here, I'll just go ahead and extrude a real, real small amount, just so each of those edges has a nice little bit of edge control and go ahead and hit OK. And so what we also want to do is we also want to make sure that our very, very top has some edge control on it. So I'll go ahead and do the extrude trick on that and go ahead and pull that up to right about there. And then under Turbo Smooth, I'll go ahead and put the Turbo Smooth modifier on it. And that's going to look pretty good straight on, but if we want to kind of get a nice little angle on it, or if we want to kind of, uh, you know, change it up just a little, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use an FFD modifier. And in this case, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and use the FFD 2x2. Two two. And what that modifier does is if I look at it in perspective, it's going to add a few extra control points here. And so I could basically just grab, you know, just two of those control points and I could pull these up or down and sort of make some quick adjustments to the mesh overall rather than having to model it out that way. And so, for example, for this shape over here on the side, you know, if I wanted to get these rivets to kind of look, you know, like they're angled just a bit, I could go ahead and just grab all of the, uh, the control points that this FFD modifier gave me. Uh, simply doing it like that. Now, you could also use this modifier to really get some nice abstract shapes if you wanted to, uh, depending on the shape that you're looking for and, and what the specific shape calls for. Uh, definitely want to take advantage of that FFD uh, at the top of the stack of the Turbo Smooth so that you could kind of go in and, and really kind of tweak and manipulate that, that shape 